I was working in a community in Hampton, Iowa as the communications director, and a position came up at Webster City, Iowa for the executive director at the chamber. So I thought, well, that would fit. That's what I do now. Let me go apply for that. So um, on my way to the interview, I left an hour early so I could drive around downtown, and because it's been a while since I'd been there. It's a community of about 8,000 people. Their downtown is one long strip, Second Street. It's about four or five blocks long. And as I was driving, I was counting empty buildings. There were 14 in a four block radius. 14 empty buildings. You know, I thought long and hard about accepting that position, <laughs> as you can well imagine. However, the decision, I made the decision, let's not keep these 14 empty buildings under a rock. Let's actually do something with them. Let's share this news. So today I'm going to talk to you about the tour of empty buildings. But I'm also going to mash up the book called Building Possibility Seven Principles. So the first principle is called Open Your Eyes. How many of us get in our car, go to work, get out of our car, go into our office, order lunch over the phone, or go next door to grab a sandwich and then go home? No clue what's going on around you. I would rate, venture to say almost all of us do that. So with this principle, I encourage you to just take a look at what's around you. Today I got to listen about um, Thunder Bay shipwrecks. How many of you have been up there to take the glass bottom boat and see the shipwrecks? Raise your hand. A third. There's a vacation right in Michigan you could take, or a long one day trip. We're going to talk about the tour of empty buildings and how this all happened. And it really was very simple in my head. <laughs> um, we set a date, April 24, 2013. We set the time from 5.30 to 7.30. We uh, wrote a press release. We went on the radio. We went on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And by we, I mean myself and my two assistants, my wonderful assistants at work. I started spreading the word, had a board meeting and twisted some arms and said, guys, you gotta share about this. We printed, that first picture you saw was our poster and we printed out great big posters and put 50 of them all over town. We really wanted to showcase these buildings. Could we actually get all 14 buildings on the tour? No, we couldn't, we got 12. We had to line up building owners and realtors that could talk about everything. We needed to figure out who was going to tell the stories about the buildings, because that's very important. And then, of course, we had to get permissions to do it. So through this whole process, we started writing our press release. And the first paragraph was, and I'm going to read it to you, realtors and or owners will be present to answer the important questions about square footage, condition of the building, cost, etc. One of our chamber associate members, renamed the chamber champions, will be available to talk about the history of the building and share any stories they may know. You'll be able to pick up a map at the chamber office located at 628 2nd Street after April 1st. The next thing we did, we called in the old people, because old people need love too. This is Art Downard. Art Downard owned the movie theater. So we called Art in because we knew that he would know some of the stories about that building where he used to own it. What really kind of blew me out of the water was not only did they share old stories, they started giving people ideas of what they could do in those locations. So they were caught up in the excitement of the event, told the old stories, and looked at the young people and said, you know, you could do this here. This is something you could do. Then we called in those who know. So if you look up in the corner, the tall guy with all the hair is Tyler Avens. He's a realtor in town. And this is Sandy Van Hahn, who's another realtor in town. We had a few owners there, but mostly we had realtors that were in each building to talk about square footage and cost and to take you upstairs to see the apartments that you don't normally get to see, that actually take you into the staff bathroom so you can see how bad it is. All those kind of things you want to see when you're thinking about buying a building. We had to think about our why. Why were we doing this? 
What's the reason? Because if you can answer that question in anything you do, it makes your venture a lot easier to do. So the paragraph we included in our press release read like this. Most humans are innately curious. We like to know what was inside a space. What could be in that space? Who was there before? What are the possibilities for an empty space? Here in Webster City, we have some vacant buildings, and we'd like our chamber members to think about people who may be a good fit for those spaces. It's an opportunity to hear about the past history of the building and to help create a future for it. Make the end of a story a good one. It's your story. You get to tell it the way you want to. And the final paragraph we told was this. With the closing of Electrolux and so many people laid off of work, it's created an opportunity for a large group of people to become entrepreneurs. Many have gone to Iowa Central and continued their education in fields that interest them. Young people live here and we look forward to helping them build and design their businesses. It seems like a good way to begin looking at what our needs are and how we can fill them. So let me give you a little backstory. Webster City was home to Electrolux, actually Beam and then it came Electrolux, for many, many years. In 2011, they packed up lock, stock, and barrel and moved to Mexico. Just about broke everybody's heart. But here's the thing. There were 850 people that worked at that company out of a town of 8,000, so approximately 10%. The town itself had been known as a factory town with that whole ethos that went around that concept. Those 850 people got down to about 80 people that didn't have jobs. They found other work. A few moved away. Most of them stayed here. Some went back to school and the majority of them found jobs. But our thinking was still in that poor us, we lost Electrolux. Poor us. How many of you have had large companies leave your town? Yeah. Look around you, not uncommon. So it was really important for us to be able to come in and tell the story of, look at all this opportunity. This is fascinating. What can we do with these buildings? What kind of entrepreneurs can we find? I shared a story at dinner last night. For those of you looking for uh, young people between the ages of 24 and 35, Go to kickstarter.com, search for the name of your town. You will be amazed at people that are doing things in their garage, that are raising funds to make that happen. Those are the people you want to talk to, because they're creating things. We have a young man in our town, I found him from Kickstarter, and um, he makes a product called WTF. Okay, right? But it stands for wrench that fits. It's made of titanium steel. It's about that big. You could hook it on your keychain, and it's empty on the inside with wrench sizes all the way around. So you could literally use it to open anything. He has raised close to a quarter million of dollars on Kickstarter and has steadily built his business, still in his garage. He's got all these wonderful CNC lathing machines. He didn't tell, he didn't hide anything from the people he was raising funds from, told them what he was going to do with the money, and part of their reward was they got some of the product. That, that Kickstarter, that crowdfunding, is really quite an interesting prospect. And I understand now that Michigan is allowed to do that, correct? Good, glad to hear that. Okay, next you want to figure out who are your partners, because when one boat rises, all boats rise. So you want to be able to have partners that want to work with you. We immediately contacted the city and said, here's what we're doing. We didn't say, here's what we want to do. We said, here's what we're doing. Will you help us? And they had no choice but to say yes. And it was a perfect fit for economic development, which is run the smokestack portion of economic development is run through our city. So it's a, a wonderful fit for them to, to be part of the tour. The local university partnered with us, shared the information with their business classes so their students could come on the tour. The county supervisors 
rural America and their county supervisors. Always a challenge, isn't it? And I know we have a few in the room, and the few I've talked to I really like, so let me clear that up. But they're rather notorious in Iowa for being penny pinchers and not wanting to do anything. And we found that to be just the opposite. And that's because we went to them and we said, here's what we're going to do. Who do you know that needs to start a business? Would you send them on the tour? We didn't ask them for money. We didn't ask them for advertising. We just asked them to share the story. We also partnered with the local paper. We are fortunate in that we have a daily paper, one of the smallest ones in Iowa, um, in our community. And they, the, the previous chamber director and the daily paper didn't quite get along very well. So we remedied that very quickly because they can be your biggest supporter. We also partnered with the radio station. So instead of spending money on 30 second ads talking about the tour, our local radio station has one hour shows that you can buy into and be part of that. So we did that. And I feel sorry for the DJ because he just thought he was going to ask me questions and I'd answer him. <laughs> he doesn't know me very well. Because I ended up asking him the questions. And I said, Woody, what used to be in this building? And he'd answer it. And I'm like, Woody, who do you know could be in that building now? You're 40 years old, you gotta have friends, who do you know? And it became a conversation of back and forth, the phones started ringing, people were participating because we were telling our story and asking questions. I had the distinct advantage of being new in the community, so I didn't know who I was making mad or not making mad. Um, and it worked out really very well. And then finally, the coffee club guys. We're a town of 8,000. We have five coffee club groups. They meet in the morning at the Hy-Vee, they meet at Lehman's Pizza, they meet at the Kiwanis, they meet at a coffee station down, a coffee place downtown at lunch, and they meet at somebody's home in the afternoon. And they're open for anybody to go to. And that probably was their first mistake with me because I went to them all and sat down at the table and said, hey guys, what's going on? And they got quiet. I'm like, nobody has a reason to complain? Well, that opened the floodgates. <laughs> but then we started talking, and, and I explained, I love that, that you want to complain and tell me what's not working, but more importantly, you need to tell me how you would fix it. And that shut the table up pretty quick. But I just kept pushing, because I believe if you have time to whine, you have time to fix it. And now those guys stop in and visit me at the office every once in a while, and keep me up to date on things. Hey, Dad, did you know this building sold? Hey, Dad, what are you going to do about this? And the answer always is, I don't know. What are we going to do? So the coffee club guys. And finally, social media. We shared this tour all over Kingdom Come on social media. Um, we had, Remember, we'd written, started writing this press release. So all those paragraphs I'd been reading. And finally, I'll read the last one. Dean Neil Adams from Iowa Central Community College has agreed to promote the tour in their business classes. The city of Webster City and the Hamilton County Supervisors have heard the plans and agree this is a project that could help entrepreneurs in the area. A little bit of knowledge about what's available goes a long way. And finally, that's our downtown, by the way. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely at night, can't see all the empty buildings. Um, it's a poster we used. Uh, we held the tour. So I encourage you, if you're going to do the same thing, I have some suggestions for you. So during the tour, be sure to take a lot of pictures. And not just the inside of the building, get pictures of the outsides of the building too. Get quotes from people that are on the tour. Why are you here? What would you do in this building? What kind of business would you like to run? Do some probing questions. And the same thing from the champions and the realtors and or owners. Get quotes from them as well. Post the pictures live, just like you guys just did at the beginning of this presentation. Do the same thing. And don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness if you have to. But take a picture of somebody and say, you know, I'm going to put this on Facebook. I'm so excited you're here. And 99 out of 100 times, they'll ask you to tag them. Oh, would you tag me? I want to show my kids. 
So don't be afraid to take pictures. Just tell people what you're going to do with them. Principle number two, tell your story and tell it again. And tell it again and tell it again. People want to be heard. They want to ask questions, make suggestions, and share dreams. So take a look around you and figure out what the stories are around you. How will you bring them to life? I'm going to pick on you, Tom. It's a good guess to say, Tom, there's a lot of guys here named Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Name an empty building in your community. Uh, right next door to my office. Right next door to your office. When was it built, do you know? Right about 1900. 1900. 1920, okay. So almost 100 years old. What was in there before? Nothing. Barber shop, most recently. Barbershop most recently. So what could somebody do with that building? Brew pub. Brew pub. What a brilliant idea. Who do you know that could help you? This is Michigan. There's lots of beer here. A couple of people. A couple of people. So these are how ideas get started. You just ask the questions. And that leads me to principle number three. Own it. In the Midwest, we have a habit of not talking about the good things we do. You all know what that's like, right? Well, start speaking up about what's going on in your community. And if you can't talk about yourself, talk about your friend and ask her to talk about you. Start owning what it is that you're doing. I've been through Michigan before. We hear about um, Saugatuck. That's about all I know. Grand Rapids, where the Amway people are. And I work in tourism all the time. I didn't know you had shipwrecks up north. I didn't know you had bears that ran across the street up here. <laughs> you know, you have unique, amazing stories that you need to be talking about. You need to own them. Let's talk about the buildings on the tour. I encourage you to look at these buildings and think of similar barber shops and places in your community that have similar buildings. So first was the old furniture store. This, was, this piece of land was bought by Laura Wilkie a uh, young lady in 1937. So the amazing thing about that story, women didn't buy property in 1937. It just didn't happen. Her husband was a bank tailor, and I don't know anything else about that story. But I can make up stuff, right? <laughs> the important thing is that women were buying businesses and property in our community back in the 30s. This young lady is Melanie, Melanie Plain. She's a physician's assistant in town, has worked for um, an alternative health care doctor. She came to us and said, I want to start my own practice. I want to create um, alternative health care for women in our community. That's a big bite to chew, right? What we did and what we do now is we partnered her with a small business development center which is part of the SBA program. And we encouraged her to join the chamber that we would help her with the process by connecting them with the SBDC. And it's a benefit of being a chamber member that you get that free. You get it free if you're not a chamber member too. <laughs> but you don't get our help in going over your business plan with you to make sure that you haven't missed anything. And the SBDC also works with local funding sources that's another very distinct advantage. As you know, the banks have had to really crack down on how they give out loans for businesses. Um, but there are other organizations that do give out money. Midas Council of Government is one in our community. The Enhanced Hamilton County Foundation is another one. There's quite a few different places to get help with starting a business. This picture, remember Tyler, the boys over here? This is the same building. Melanie went in, tore down walls, redid the entire building. And they've been open since July. Just this month, she added another doctor in her practice since July, less than a year, because it's been so wildly successful. Chalfant Plumbing. This location was originally uh, built by a doctor, Dr. Drake, who was a physician and surgeon. And over the years, it was used as a doctor's office. It had been an insurance office and a beauty parlor before it became Chalfant Plumbing. Well, this is what it looks like now. 
neighbors, heating, cooling, plumbing, geothermal, and radon, and that is their entire name, are located in Ames, Iowa, and they came in and they bought Randy out. They also hired local people to work there and kept Randy on staff. They're very active in our community. They participate in chamber events. It's been a great addition to the community without losing a business. This building was built in 1926 and has always been a law office. The woman with the white hair is Nancy Kaiser. Her husband, Larry, passed away shortly after Electrolux left town. Nancy is our local historian, and anything you ever want to know about any building or event, she knows. And she does a lot of public speaking for us and refuses to take money for it. And this is what she said. She said, I just couldn't put up another for sale sign in a window in Webster City. With the closing of Electrolux, there were for sale signs all over town. I just couldn't put up another one. We had to twist her arm to be on the tour because mostly she had to clean the building up, had to get rid of a lot of boxes in it. However, because she did, this is her building right here in the middle, she sold it to a young entrepreneur <coughs> named Tony Harland, who is keeping things in the second, third floor for storage, but has rented out the bottom floor to Ben Kaufman, a local young man from the area that had moved to Des Moines and wanted to come back home and raise his family and invest in his community. So he's renting out uh, Waddell and Reed, their financial advisors. So not only did we have a new entrepreneur in town buy the building, now we have another entrepreneur that's opened up a business in the bottom part, and he's looking at actually buying another building downtown as a financial investment. And by the way, look at these other buildings. They did not look like that before the tour. This is Al the Barber. His building has two storefronts, two small storefronts. It's at 5 Street, um, built in 1908 as a restaurant. Um, it was many things before it became a barbershop in 32, and has mostly stayed a barbershop throughout the years. Al has not joined the chamber. And you know what? He doesn't need to. He has enough customers. He doesn't even advertise. He should be retired. But he would come about once a month to my office just to have a cup of coffee with me and talk a little bit. Over the winter, I didn't see him for three months, and that kind of bothered me, so I went down to visit him. And it turns out that Al's pretty sick. He's got cancer, um, and he really needed to fill the empty location, the second storefront. So we got to talking. And I knew a young lady, Victoria Bumpan, who is part of our Laotia community, that wanted to open up a bubble tea shop. Bubble tea is kind of like a smoothie with tapioca pearls in it, and it's a Asian ice cream frappuccino kind of thing. I thought, well, that'll never work. It's winter time. How are we going to do that? Surprisingly, we have 3.4% of our community is Laotian. And they support Victoria in her efforts. They've helped her clean up the building. And now we have some place to go get ice cream. It's not really ice cream. But that's what we tell people. It's ice cream. <laughs> the Dimorodsky Building. This was built in 1927. It sits on two lots. Um, Morris Dimorodsky came to Webster City with his wife Rose in 1912. They were Jewish from Russia and were rag peddlers. So they would collect, you know, use rags, clean them up and go about selling them. They created an industry out of nothing. Literally, think about that. They created an entire industry out of nothing. And at the time they were able to build this building and there were many um, different industries operated out of it and the most the one before the, before the church was uh, public health was in this building. Big, huge location, and public health finally built their own building and left this building empty. Well, Pastor Ephraim came in and said, we're going to start a church, and we need a building. It sounds good to me. Why don't you go look at this building? They have become very active in the community. They participate in all our events. Of course, they joined the chamber. Um, 
they're, they have a, a group of women and the pastor bring out this huge griddle and they cook meat and make tacos at all the events. The women do all the work and the pastor just turns the meat over and talks to everybody. This is the old Pizza Hut, the interior of it. Pizza Hut built this building in 1973. Um, and it later became Brendo Pizza, El Toro Loco. It sat vacant for a couple of years. And what's happened since then, the crispy egg roll has moved in. So they offer Vietnamese, uh, Thai, Laotian, uh, Asian food, more than just egg rolls. And they are local. The two girls that run it are local. Their dad came from California where he has three businesses, three crispy egg rolls already in California. So they came in with a business plan. They know what they're doing and the food is awesome. These two storefronts were empty and they were on the tour. And it's called the old Jazzy's building because at the end, it used to be Jazzy's dance. And all the kids were taken there by their parents to learn how to dance. I'm sure you probably noticed too, the old Pizza Hut, the old Jazzy's, the old Lomitas. All these buildings have old names and they kind of stick. So you really have to learn how to shine and become your own building. In any case, El Benedicio has a grocery store there and there is a Laotian grocery store there as well. It's a beautiful building. It was built in 1880. This building now stands by sheer will of habit. It's got a new roof, but you can stand on that second floor and look all the way up to the roof. It's not safe to be in those units. The woman that owns it will sell it for a dollar. It's going to take three quarters of a million to re refurnish it. So what would it cost to tear it down and leave Leon standing? I don't know. But we're certainly putting those questions out. Do we save it? Do we go for historical tax credits, which we have in Iowa, thank you. Do we uh, find investors? What do we do? But the thing is, we're talking about it. People are interested. We need to save this building. Why don't we bring it back to its old glory? Why don't we put housing up here on these 14 foot high walls and put skylights in? Why don't we make those condominiums where people that own beautiful houses but their kids are all grown um, want something cool to live in downtown and young families can come in and buy their houses. Principle number four, fail big. How many of you have ever failed at something? In your business? Yeah, all of us, right? How many of you don't talk about it? <laughs> Change that. Start talking about it. Let people know that you're not perfect. And figure out why you failed so you don't fail again. Involve your community in the conversation. There's nothing worse than keeping a secret that everybody knows. It makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. So don't be afraid to fail big. And on that note, on our tour, we had this building at 1545 West 2nd. The building has not been sold, but because it was on the tour, Matthew's got a lot of new customers. He still owns the building. He's now thinking of, well, maybe I don't sell it. Maybe I just grow a little bit. Again, another young, young man that falls in that 24 to 35 year age range. And this building, it has three storefronts. The apartments upstairs are filled. A young electrician in the community bought the building, opened up his hobby shop right here, J&J &J Hobbies. It has since closed. The building has been empty for a long time. We assume that the upstairs apartments are paying the mortgage. He was to be on the tour. The day before the tour, he called up and said, I can't do it, I'm too busy. You can put a banner up in the window, put my phone number on it. We considered it a failure um, because I really wanted to show that building. We have people that are interested in it. To this day, two years later, we still have problems showing the building of trying to get that sold and filled. And I don't know why. I didn't do anything to take him off. I actually kind of like the kid. But it's a failure and we're trying to figure out how to work around it. My hope is he can figure out how to sell it on his own. Principle number five, partner up. If you are not figuring out how to have your community have a tourism effort and tie it into your social media people and into your um, small businesses, you want to start working on that. And I'm, I'm going to talk about as a result of the tour, 
Connie and Ron Gilbert own several buildings downtown. <coughs> they are both retired. Well, he's not. He manages the building to make sure they're in good shape. But they had two buildings on the tour that were empty and didn't really have any lookers. So we got to talking to them the next week and sat down and figured out, why don't you guys become part of the incubator project? And of course they looked at me and went, what's that? And I was making it up as I went along. Um, I grew up on a farm in the 50s and 60s and incubators were these big huge things that the baby chicks ran under and stayed warm so that they could grow. And eventually they went into their own places. They didn't stay there forever. They turned into chickens and then we ate them later. Um, we don't do that in the incubator project. So they agreed to put these two buildings into that project. And for them, they offered three months rent free. The uh, tenant had to pay the utilities and the rest of the year was reduced rent. And that was up to them to negotiate that with whoever was coming in. And the people that were coming in were required to work with the SBDC and create a business plan. It was for new businesses, new entrepreneurs, and to create a business plan. And then we'd have a new business in town. Brilliant idea, right? Nice and simple. We didn't have to do much at the chamber other than to watch the business planning portion of it. So one of the old Lomitas building, one of the buildings in that was a corner restaurant. And the old, they call it Old Lomitas, Mexican restaurant that actually grew and bought another building a block down that was much larger. So it left this small restaurant open. The second building was the old bridal gallery. And Ron and Connie put it into the incubator project. Two women named their company Resale by Fraz. It was a consignment shop. They were in business for three months, took consignments, never paid anybody and allegedly, that's been my word today, hasn't it? Allegedly took off with the money. After three months they were gone, and I mean gone, out of town, we can't find them. Um, and our first clue should have been no business plan. They kept saying, we're working on it, we're working on it, and they weren't. However, a young family moved back here from Chicago and opened up a clothing store. And it's like Air Apostle, it's those young hip clothing and we have a, a good sized teenage and 20 year old population. And so now they're put a sign up this week that says Chicago store on it. And they're very busy and they are not part of the incubator project. They were quite happy, they had the funds and the money to go ahead and open and shared their business plan with us. Everyone can be a hero. In our community, I started on March the 4th March 7th, the local movie theater closed. This is the Webster Theater, what it looked like when I got into town at uh, 612 Second Street, 610 Second Street, right down the street from me. This fellow, Jeff Pingle is his name. He works for Black Hills Energy. He's the guy that drives around the truck and makes sure that gas leaks don't happen. Um, that second week that after the movie closed, we held a community meeting to get ideas from people. How can we save the Webster? What can we do to save the Webster? There were 66 people at that meeting, which is a very good turnout for a public meeting mentioned at the last minute. And Jeff was there. After that first meeting, Jeff called me, emailed, texted me, or stopped by every day. Deb, we gotta save the theater. Deb, we gotta save the theater. Deb, what are you doing today? Deb, did you talk to so-and-so? Deb, 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 Deb. Finally, we got together nine people that were interested to be on the board to save the Webster. That's our board, dressed up as superheroes at a dodgeball competition against seniors in high school. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but we raised about $2,000 that night. Uh, we also went to, Jeff went to Bob Vendiste. I told you about him earlier. But he didn't go to him to ask for money. He went to him to ask for advice. Bob, we want to save the movie theater, and you know everybody in town. Who do we talk to? What do we say to them? And Bob spent two hours with Jeff while he took notes and answered his questions. He later emailed him a list of people to ask for money. And two months later, he gave $10,000 himself. And the nicest thing about that story is that he only gave $10,000. Because Bob could have bought and sold that place without even thinking but it never would have worked if Bob Van Dees paid for it all. It had to be saved by the entire community. 
Those $5, $10, $25 donations made a world of difference. One of Jeff's co-workers, Jamie Sizer, said, I know how we can raise money. We can raise $90,000. Take us a month. And of course, we said, well, what are you talking about? He goes, let's sell the seats for $300 a piece. And we'll just put a little tag on the back for whoever bought it with their name on it. So we did, because we didn't know we couldn't. <laughs> and we sold 302 seats. We've since sold another 125 stars to go up on the wall because we don't have any seats left. That's what our marquee looks like now. We literally went from zero to hero. And I'll tell you what hero stands for. The high school entrepreneurial class who we involved in the project, and they made movie trailers for us to help promote the sales and the donations, named it HERO. And it stands for Help, Entertain, and Restore Organization. So now we've saved the movie theater. And what people told us would take three years to raise the money, we raised a quarter of a million dollars in nine months. Let me repeat that, $250,000 in nine months. And we didn't use volunteers. We don't use volunteers to run the theater. We hired staff because we want to be able to say we brought jobs to this community and you can too. Last principle, do the work. Nothing happens if you don't do the work. I can stand up here and talk till I'm blue in the face and you could say great ideas, great ideas, but if you don't go home and do the work, if we didn't go back into the community and actually do the work, nothing gets done. A friend of mine says, you just have to sit in the chair. Do the work. That's how things get, get accomplished. That's how you save buildings, and that's how you create a whole lot of fun. And always be nice, because the world is a small town. Local is the new global. So what were the results? One of the most important ones are people are talking. And that means a whole lot. Those coffee guys called their grandkids in Des Moines, Kansas City, and said, you know, we got buildings down here. You need to move back home. We can help you get this started. And that wouldn't have happened before. The conversation would have been, I don't know what we're going to do. We have all these empty buildings. Now they think about what we can do with those buildings. And remember, we went from a factory town to an entrepreneurial town. We have actually opened up the doors. We have let entrepreneurs know, we have a place for you. We have let the 20 and 30 year olds know, bring your kids back. I'm glad you went and got educated and learned a few things in the workforce. But come on back, we'll help you. Raise your kids here. It's a whole lot safer here than it is in the big city. And you know everybody. Who's heard of long tail results? A few of you, I'll go through that. It's pretty simple, short tail, are the results that happen right away, okay? So short tail is the people that looked at the buildings, that um, the few that bought or rented them, those things happen right away. Some of the social media stuff, the sharing of the news happened right away, that's all short tail. Long tail are things that you kind of see that have happened because of all this energy and excitement in our community. And one of those that we're particularly happy about, we have a, a farm called I Was First, and these were uh, two cousins that farmed together and had three empty hog houses and started doing research, and now they raise barramundi fish in them. Um, it took approximately nine years from beginning to the end to figure out how to do that and how to do that safely. They traveled all over the world to figure out what kind of fish and worked with lots of people. Because of the tour, they reached out to Barra Blue Farms, these folks here. Um, they're buying two buildings, two, one at the industrial site and one the Kinko building, which is one of the old Electrolux buildings, and putting in over 200 fish tanks. And the fish tank goes from that wall to that wall. They're huge. Imposing flow technology. They bought the rights for the technology and how all the water works. They're working with our city. This is an economic developer's dream. They're working with our city to get the raw water rights to make that work and creating 150 jobs. Let me repeat that, 150 jobs. Because the two cousins that had a hog farm that they turned into a fish farm outside of town 
call these people and say, you need to live here. Look what we can do for you. In Story City, Iowa, there are seven stores that are either antique, architectural salvage, uh, they rehab furniture, all those HGTV kind of places, right? Um, and they have drawn interest. They brought people in from all over the world. People fly into Des Moines and take bus tours to come up and shop at all these locations. And Story City is about 45 minutes away from us. So we thought it would be really nice if we could have one of the incubator projects be that kind of business, to do that kind of thing. And this is actually SOS Vintage. Uh, my friend Cheryl and I, an excuse to go shopping, every weekend went and visited different stores that were having events so they would have the store itself, but in their yards they would have other at-home businesses that did this architectural salvage and this rehab. And we were in Gilbert, Iowa, half an hour away, and I saw this beautiful bench made out of old headboards. It was just stunning. Sat down on the bench and the owner came and sat beside me. We talked a long time and uh, sing, uh, uh, married mom, husband worked, she didn't, she did this kind of stuff at home, five kids, um, and was thinking about going into business because she was outgrowing her space in the garage. Um, and I said, you need to come look at our incubator project. We invited her in. <sighs> it was too small for her. They loved the community. They bought a building. They bought another building and opened up, it's two stories, it's an old building, and opened up SOS Vintage. They celebrate one year of being open this May. We're really excited to have them in town. And they, they use their marketing tools very well. They worked with SBDC to create the business plan. They worked with a local bank to get funding. We have three local banks in our community, which is almost unheard of these days. Um, we were really happy to have another new business in town. So, let's do the math. 12 buildings on the tour, two were not sold or rented. That means 10 buildings have been sold or rented. That's success in my neighborhood, how about yours? And one more thing. Um, Henry Ford said, if you believe you cannot, you cannot. But if you believe you can, you can. Take that home with you and know that you can do anything. What condition uh, did you require the buildings to be toured to be in? I mean, were, did they have to turn the lights on? Was um, the vacuum? Well, there? first of all, they had to be standing, okay? <laughs> um, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Yes, the lights had to be on. We required that they clean them up as best as they could which was another short tail benefit, by the way. You clean up 12 empty buildings in any community and it makes the town already look better. Um, we have a bakery in town, or had a bakery in town, that bought the building they were in in 1973. And the building next to them burned down. I don't know how you burn a brick building, but it burned down. And the supporting wall in between them uh, was never determined who was responsible for it, it started to buckle. Uh, the people that owned the bakery did put a new roof on the building, but they were still using the same equipment that they bought back in 1973. They did very little upgrade to it. Uh, the city, who did not want to do it, but they had to for the safety of the citizens, had to post signs that said, be careful, the wall's gonna fall down, basically. Just encourage and post it in front of their business. Um, <coughs> Some of, they make the best donut holes in the world. That's what they're locally, what they were locally known for. They had six kids, none of them wanted to go into the business. Uh, someone started a Facebook page called Save the Bakery and wanted all the people that were on the Facebook page, and there were thousands, to give $5 a piece to help save the bakery. And the owner said, no, we are not a charity case. We're not taking your money. It's now closed, buildings for sale. So think about, you know, pride goes before the fall. Uh, we, that building could have been saved, that, that wall could have been repaired for about $25,000. People make the choices they make, and the good news for us is someone's looking at buying the empty lot and the building to put up a, another building and another business there. A local chamber member made maps for us and uh, you would come by the chamber office to pick up the map 
and then you just go wherever you wanted to go. It was a two hour time frame, and we had coffee and cookies at the local hy V afterwards. Um, and there were, I can't remember the number, under 100 people that went on the tour, which is another point about um, a tipping point. The people, under 100 people that did go on the tour, really talked about it because we had encouraged them to do so because we were there taking pictures of them and sharing them as well. And they wanted everybody they, they knew to know that they'd been on the tour and let's rebuild the community kind of thing. Um, sometimes numbers aren't always that important. At first I was a little upset that we didn't even hit 100 people on the tour, but actually we did so much better because the people that were there really made a difference. Well, let me thank you very much for inviting me to be here and for letting me share my stories with you. And please go to buildingpossibility.net forward slash ebook and download the uh, 37 page ebook.